commandments. All right, so everybody hold up one finger like this right here. All right, commandment number one. When I say, what's commandment number one? You're going to say, keep God first. Here we go. What's commandment number one? Keep God first. Ooh, very good. Now, we're going to read it because we actually want you to hear specifically what the Bible says. But what's commandment number one? Keep God first. So in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, it says this. You shall have no other gods before me. What's commandment number one? Keep God first. All right, now number two. Everybody take two fingers up like this right here. Okay? I want you to turn to the side like this right here, and you're going to say, cut out idols. Try it with me. Cut out idols. Good. What's commandment number two? Cut out idols. Let's see what the Bible says. All right, the Bible says, you shall not make for yourself any idol or any likeness of what is in heaven above or earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them. Hey guys, if you're going to keep God first, you've got to cut out idols. What's commandment number one? Keep God first. What's number two? Cut out idols. All right, commandment number three. Hold up three fingers like this right here. I want you to put it underneath your chin. It's like a W. And you're going to say, watch your words. Here we go. What's commandment number three? Watch your words. All right, this is what the Bible says. It says, in verse 7, it says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. For the Lord will not leave him unpunished who takes his name in vain. All right, I need two volunteers. Because I want, I want you to really understand what this means. One right here and two right there. Come on up here. All right, tell me your name. Matthew. Everybody say, hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Okay, come on this side right here. And what's your name? Riley. Okay, now do you guys know each other? So you're not like from the same church? Not like brother and sister, cousins, boyfriend, girlfriend? Nothing like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to pretend that I'm going to put you both in a situation. And you guys are going to tell me if they're using God's name in a right way or a wrong way. Because there are a lot of people, and guys, they go to our churches all the time, but they use God's name in vain and they don't even know that they're doing it. And so right here, let's say one day Matthew's praying and he says, Dear God, thank you for it. Now he used God's name. Is that a right way or a wrong way? Right. Yeah, because he's talking to God. So one day, let's say she's talking to a friend of hers, and she looks at her friend and she says, God loves you. Is that a right way or a wrong way? Right. It's a right way. Guys, if you're talking to God, or you're talking about God, you're not misusing His name. But if you're just throwing His name out there in vain, it means there's no purpose. So in other words, you walk in, it's a surprise birthday party. Happy birthday! And you go, oh my! And you use God's name. Are you talking to Him? No. Are you talking about Him? You're just throwing his name around. And guys, God's name is holy, not to be used in vain. So let's say you're hammering and you miss the nail and you get your thumb. And you're like, oh my, and you use God's name. Right way or wrong way? Wrong. Yeah, because you're not talking to him. You're not talking about him. You're misusing his name. That's what it means to use God's name in vain. So what's commandment number three? Watch your word. Okay, let's review here. What's commandment number one? Keep God. on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. What's commandment number four? Keep God's day holy. What's right. commandment number three? Watch your words. What's number two? Cut out idols. And what's number one? Keep God's words. All right, number five. Hold up five fingers like this right here. Put it to your head just like you're saluting, and you're going to say, honor your father and mother. What's commandment number five?
whatever your God gives you. See, it comes with a promise. Hey, what do you know? Jesus! What do you know? Jesus! Guys, God did not give us commandments to save us. God gave us Jesus to save us. Right. But when we look at the commandments, we realize we're not perfect the way God is perfect. We all need Jesus. And when you know Jesus, guys, no matter what you face, you can live a life where you're not shaken because you have an incredible, awesome God. Who should be number one in your life? Jesus! That's right, you guys. You know what? When you're walking with Jesus, you can trust in this, that no matter what comes at you, you'll never be shaken. How many of you guys remember this song from two years ago? I want you guys to stand up. Here's your part. You're going to go, oh, I'll never be shaken. I'll never be shaken. Good. Everybody turn and say, punch it to it. Punch it to it. Who's been on one of your lives? Right. See, we're going to have a competition. Hey, guys, when you love Jesus, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. And when you love Jesus, people are going to see there's something different about you. So if you're going to your seat, it's competition time. Here we go. Everybody together. Stand up.
with where you're looking. Here, let me, some of you guys have asked, is he just my friend or is he my brother? He is my husband. We are married. Yes, we are married. We will be married 20 years this year. So here's the deal, he's my husband. That means all my love and affection is meant just for him. And that means that because I am his wife, all his love and affection is meant just for me. And that's not just physical things. That's his eyes, too. That's my eyes. We're supposed to keep our eyes on each other for our marriage. Does that make sense? So we say, stop. Do not commit adultery. Say it with me. Stop. Do not commit adultery. Now, before we go, here's the deal. I used to think protecting your marriage, like, stop. Do not commit adultery. It's just when you're married. It's not. You know what? Some of you guys, you think, oh, I got a boyfriend, I got a girlfriend. You know what? You need to start right now protecting your eyes and guarding your heart for the person you're going to marry someday. Somebody should have told me that when I was little. So, right now, for you, this commandment is for you. Stop! Do not commit adultery. And the Bible says, Exodus 20, verse 14, you shall not commit adultery. All right. Commandment number eight. Hold up eight fingers, no thumbs. Did you know in some countries if you get caught stealing, they actually cut your thumb off? It's their way of marking you as a thief. Okay, so no thumbs right here. What's commandment number eight? Do not steal. Try again. What's commandment number eight? Do not steal. A little bit of review. What's commandment number one? Keep God.
coveting leads to stealing. Because first you want it, you sit in your heart. Then you act on it. See, sin so often leads to more sin. Let's hear what, uh, what the Bible says. All right, verse 17, it says, You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. So don't covet your neighbor's donkey. Okay? That's right. Don't cover your neighbor, man. I don't want a donkey like that. I don't want that donkey. You do not want your ox right now. <laughs> What's commandment number 10? Everybody say, do not covet. Okay, try to go, give me, give me, give me. Give me, give me, give me, give me. What's commandment 10? Do not covet. Okay, now, when I was in the second grade, um, uh, what happened to me one day was this. A friend of mine, and, and, and it actually, it, it started with coveting. Okay, a friend of mine, we had indoor recess until it was snowing outside. And so we're sitting indoors and I'm playing checkers because I didn't really have anything fun to play with. And I looked over and a friend of mine, her name was Amy, she had this really cool Hot Wheels car. And it was orange, it was number 57, it was like this racer thing. And she's on the ground, she's playing with it. I looked over, now the first day, I thought, boy, that's a really cool car. I, I wish I had a car like that. Day two, still snowing, we're indoor recess, you know, and, and I'm playing with the checkers, and I look over, and Amy, she's on the floor playing with this car. Day two, I looked over, and I thought, man, that's a really cool car. I wish I had a car like that. Day three, okay, I looked over, and Amy's playing with the car, and I thought, I don't want a car like that. I want that car. And I knew that Amy kept that car in you know, the front of your desk inside. It has that pencil tray. That's where she put the car. I knew she kept it there because I watched. She kept it there. And my thought was if I was the only person in the room, I could take Amy's car and nobody would know. Because it was very important to me that I didn't get caught. And so I decided, when could I be in the room by myself? Well, when we line up for lunch, if I'm the last one out of the room, and I'm fast enough, I can get that car, catch up to my line, and nobody would know it. And so my teacher said, I'm hungry, line up. Everybody started lining up, grabbing their lunches. So I went to the back of the room. And at the back of the room, they're getting ready to head out. My teacher's going out, and my kids start looking at me. Kind of like, well, why aren't you heading out? And I thought, well, this looks really suspicious. And so I walked over to a Kleenex box, and I started pulling out Kleenexes. And I started pretending that I was blowing my nose. <laughs> and I'm watching. <laughs> last kid walked out of the room. And guys, I stuck my hand out like this and I walked over to Amy's desk and I grabbed that orange Hot Wheels car and I shoved it in my pocket right here. Now, I knew what I was doing was wrong. And I walked out of that room and I, I, when I saw Amy looking for her car later, she went to the teacher. I can't find my car. The teacher stood in front of our class said, has anybody seen Amy's car? It was in my pocket. Well, finally, school Ended. I went home. I remember walking home, car in my pocket. I can feel it there, my precious. <laughs> and I got home, and when I got home, I was in my room playing with this car. And my mom came in. And she said, Colby, where'd you get that car? And I said, Mama, funny that you should ask. You see, I had not planned on my mom to see it. I said, Mama, I got a story for you. And this is what I said. I said, Mama, during playground, during recess, I climbed to the top of the slide. And when I got to the top of the slide, Mama, there was this car there. Now, I'm thinking, and I'm thinking, okay, now, if she just thinks I found it, she's going to make me take it back. If I take it back, my teacher's going to know what happened, and I'm going to get in trouble. And so I said, and, and Mama, and taped to the car was a note. And the note said, this car is for Colby. <laughs> I lied. Now I want you to see this. First thing I did, I looked at something, it wasn't mine, and I wanted it. I coveted it. Commandment number 10, what does it say? Do not covet. Then I took it. What's commandment number 8? Do, Do not steal. My mama asked me, I lied about it. What's commandment number 9? Do, Do not lie. And what's commandment number 5? Honor your father. Hey guys, in one day, a couple of hours, I broke four of the Ten Commandments. Guys, when you start doing things that are wrong, it leads you to more things that are wrong. The commandments are meant to be a mirror. When you look in the mirror, like ladies, you go look in the mirror and you're like, oh, my hair, it needs to be fixed. You see yourself. You see yourself. Hey guys, when you look at the commandments of God, you
you know what you see? You see that you're not perfect the way God is perfect. And we've all done wrong things. And because we've all done wrong things, we all need Jesus. So in other words, God didn't give us the commandments to say this is the way to heaven. Being good cannot get you to heaven. God gave us the commandments to say, I'm not perfect. And Jesus is the way to heaven. I need Jesus. Everybody stand up, stand up. We sang a song last night, and you guys are recognizing it. Here we go. Blind master by the proclaiming cloud. Blind master by the proclaiming cloud. Blind master by the proclaiming cloud. Should we do it? Should we do it? Should we do it? The way to go. No, 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 Okay, give a neighbor a high five. 
There we go. When I was five years old, I was in my bedroom. And it was my turn to pray before we went to bed. And after I prayed, I just felt this tug in my heart. I needed Jesus to become my Lord and Savior. So I ran to my mom and asked her, how can I go to heaven? She said, well, you need to pray and ask Jesus to become the boss of your life. And so later on that night, I prayed. And I asked Jesus to become the boss of my life. And I asked him to forgive me for all my sins. And that's how I know for sure that I'm going to heaven. How about you? Now, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm getting ready to trick you. Now, how I'm going to trick you, I'm going to trick you with this box right here. I want you to watch close. Guys, I want you to try not to get tricked. Because in life, guys, there's a lot of lies and there's a lot of tricks that are going to come your way. And you've got to be alert. You've got to be careful. And you know the best way not to fall for the lies of the world is to know the truth of God. Because see, if you knew the big picture of what's happening right here, you wouldn't fall for it. But I'm going to see if I can trick you. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open up the box right here, and I'm going to show you what's inside of the box. Okay, now what's inside that side right there? What do y'all see? Okay. And then what's inside this side right here? What do y'all see? Okay, is there anything in there right now? Okay, just take a look. In fact, even just take your hand right here. Take your hand. Okay, and just kind of put your hand, you see, and you're feeling around, feeling around. Okay, there's nothing in my box. But I'm going to put something in the box. And so I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to shut the front doors. I'm going to set it down. And I'm going to take this dice right here. And I'm going to put this dice in this side right here. Like that, right there. Now I'm going to shut the top. Which side is the dice on? Right here. So, now watch. Now, you, a lot of you, you're pointing. Now watch. I'm going to turn the box around like this. Now, which side is the dice on? Okay. So, you want me to open this side and show you the dice, right? Okay. I do. We have people want me to open this side because you think I'm tricking you. And so, this is what I'll do. I'll open this side first. No dice on that side right there. Okay. Okay, now you guys, some of you on this side, you want me to open this side right there. So, here we go. No dice on that side right there. Okay. Okay, now he wants me to open this side again. Okay.